Dang, I am yellowed out today. I really love how yellow looks when we done it look good, I know. <laughs> so uh, today's video, I'm trying to be all happy and positive because I don't want to cry. <laughs> but today's video um, is one that I've been trying to put off my entire life, honestly. My grandma has told me that I should make a video about my dad and what happened and how I've handled it, how I'm dealing with it, because I feel like, and she feels like that, it will help someone who's going through the same thing I went through or like me as a surprise, it happened. And it does happen. Everyone's going to die one day. I'm not trying to be negative, but that's just life, you know? Um, I hope it doesn't happen to any of you guys anytime soon. But if it happens, um, I hope that I can help you guys. I'ma just talk about how I dealt with it and what kept me sane and yeah and i'm not making this video to get views to get sympathy because that's really not what i'm looking for i just want to be someone that can help you get through what i went through and um if you don't have anyone to talk to or if you're not comfortable talking about it and like me i'm the type of person like i don't really like showing um my emotions, I don't like talking about them. And the only person I really could talk to was my dad. So um, since he died, I kept all that inside and I had to learn to open up to people and let them know how I feel or why I'm acting like this or why I'm talking like this. And so yeah, I just wanna, I don't know if that's making any sense. If you don't have anyone to talk to, um, you can talk to me and I'm making this video to kind of help you and let you know that this is what help for me maybe it's gonna help for you everyone's different i'm just letting you know um i'm gonna go through everything i don't want this video to be too long but i know it's gonna be long um so i'm gonna just go through everything starting with the day that my dad died it's really hard to even say and it's been four years but it's like it's not real to me at all my biggest fear was really like my dad died, honestly. That was one of my biggest fears. Um, it happened and just like any fear you have when you go through it, it, it's scary. So, boom, this is what happened. August 26, 2014, um, early morning, my dad was in a motorcycle accident on his way to work. My dad usually left in the morning around like three or four, I believe. Um, I'm gonna just tell you guys what I know. This is so hard. Okay, I'm gonna just take you guys through my whole day. Starting from hearing my dad leave out the house. So I was, I don't know why I was still awake, but August 25th, 2014 was the last day I've ever seen my dad. So um, that night, I don't know why my voice is getting kind of crackly. I'm, I don't wanna cry, I'm trying not to cry, but I feel like I'm gonna cry. So that night we were watching Sharknado um, I just had gotten a, a TB test because I was starting a new school because I was living with him so I was starting my senior year um, that was what that was on a Monday Monday night because he died on Tuesday and I was starting senior year on Wednesday um, so I had got a TB test we were talking about my TB test um, he was letting me know some things that happened to him in the military um, then we said our right, I love yous and good nights and I went to bed not knowing that was the last day I was ever going to see my dad's face talk to him hear his voice um, so I don't know why I'm still awake like this is the only this is honestly the first time I heard my dad leave for work because normally I'm asleep it's like three four in the morning I hear his motorcycle start up because he took his motorcycle to work that was his fastest and easiest way I guess I heard it I heard the garage close and I heard him leave. I don't know why I'm still awake. I'll write back to that later at the end, but I don't know why I'm still awake. Um, then at around six or seven, probably eight, <laughs> I think it was like six or six, six or seven, my get a call from my Nana, which is his mom. His job called me and said he hasn't made it to work. Go see if he overslept. I told her, I said, no, he left. Like I heard the bike this morning, he left. She was like, well, just go make sure, um, go see that he didn't oversleep. Yada yada. First thing I did was go out of my room in, in our hallway closet. He kept his motorcycle jacket, his helmet, and his boots for the bike, which he wore all times, all, like every time he rode it. So first thing I did is open the closet. I looked down, don't see his shoes. I said, he left, like his, his um, boots aren't in here. She says, go upstairs, see if he overslept. Went upstairs, 
he's not in the van. He left for work. Like, I know he left. I heard him. Um, so I tell her, no, he left, he left. And then she's like, okay, hang up. For some reason, I got this weird feeling and I just prayed. In my prayer, I asked God to look over him if anything has happened, protect him. And I didn't want to think the worst. So that's all I said. Then I tried to call and I don't know why I was getting scared. I only called once. And I didn't want to call again because I was scared for him not to answer because that's how I knew that something really bad happened. Some time has went on, went on. We lived with his girlfriend. She's Vietnamese, so she came in the house. And it was weird because her brother came over to get to watch her kids because she got two younger sons. Um, so he was there. She came in the house speaking in Vietnamese. I didn't know what they were saying. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking she's just talking to him just yelling because he's upstairs oh uh, my grandma coming back she says your dad's at the hospital he just was in a really bad motorcycle accident so i said okay she said you and my dad's girlfriend is going to come over then we're going to go to the hospital to see him that's what she told me keep that in mind that's what she told me okay that we we're going to go to the hospital to see him he was in a really bad motorcycle accident Okay, on the drive, because we lived in Huntington Beach, my dad, my nana lives in LA. On the ride from Huntington to LA, in my head, I'm thinking, oh, I'm about to go, like, I'm thinking that he was in a really bad motorcycle accident, and the worst that it can get is he's either paralyzed or he just, like, is on life support. That's what I was thinking, okay? Death never went through my head, never crossed my mind. It's something I just did not want to think about. So... We pull up to my Nana's house. The company that my dad worked with, it was, it was, it's a really big company. Um, and it was this driver outside and this man standing outside the car. And um, on the drive, actually, let me mention that my dad's girlfriend was asking me to send her videos from us going to the lake because we went to the lake for my birthday that Saturday. So this happened on a Tuesday. That Saturday, we went to the lake and like I recorded some videos and all this other good stuff. Um, maybe I'll insert those probably right here pictures or whatever and she was asking me to send her those I was like oh okay like I I really was not thinking that he died you guys like I did not want to think it but I was like okay so I'm sending it to her then we arrived at my Nana's house I see the, the driver outside which I thought was kind of weird I'm like why is there just this car and this man just standing outside the car and we get into the house we get into the house. They're all moving really, really slow. Like walking from our car to my Nana's house felt like it took years. Like I'm not lying. They're walking so freaking slow. Like they're moving slow. I asked my Nana, I'm like, why are you moving so slow? Like, come on, we have to go to the hospital. And she's like, no, no, come inside, come inside. Cause I was still outside. She was like, come inside, come inside. And uh, my dad's girlfriend was actually with her best friend and they walked to the back to my Nana's room. And my Nana set me down. She said, come here, like, let me talk to you. She set me down on the couch. <laughs> Shit. So she set me down on the couch. And she said, your dad was in a really bad accident. And I said, okay, I know, like, come on, let's go to the hospital. She said, no, listen to me. He was in a really bad accident. Your dad's dead. That's her exact words. I didn't... Mm, the feeling that I'm getting right now is the same feeling that I had. I'm like shaking. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, I said no. That That's all that can like physically come out of my mouth was no. And she says, yes, your dad died. And I blacked out. Like, like, uh, like from this time that she told me, sitting on that couch to get in, to get into the hospital, to about like the second or third day, like it's choppy to me. Like, I don't know what happened after that. I felt like my body was in shock. What I just heard did not register to my brain. Um, I blacked out. When I came to it, I was going like in and out. So I blacked out. I came to it, I was on the floor crying. Don't know how I got to the floor, but I was on the floor in front of the door. Like we were sitting on the couch right here. The door is over here. I was in front of the door crying on the floor. Blacked out again, came back to it, we were in the car on the way to the hospital. I called my mom and she didn't answer. And I left her a voicemail. And on the voicemail I said, my dad was in a really bad accident. On his way to work this morning, he was riding a motorcycle and he didn't make it. That's all I said. Um, I'm not sure, I think I talked to my mom like 
couple hours after that. I'm not sure. I don't know when I talked to my mom after that. I just know I left her a voice message and then I called DJ and I told him the same thing I told my mom. I'm not really sure what was his response. I think he just said, you're lying. Or no, that didn't happen or something like that. Like it was a shock for everyone. And I was like, no, like he he's dead. Like he, he did not make it, he died. And then after I got off the phone with DJ, I just know, oh, DJ's my boyfriend for those of you who don't know. After that, I, we were at the hospital. Um, my grandpa was there, which is my dad's dad. And I just remember going to him, hugging him, crying, 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 crying. And I don't know about you guys, but me, I don't like seeing um, people's bodies after the fact that their soul has left them. Um, I don't, I feel like that's not them. Like it, it kind of, it scares me, honestly. Um, I don't like really going to funerals. I don't like going up to the casket and seeing the body. Like it freaks me out because I'm like, that's not them. Like that's weird, that's not them. So we were at the hospital, okay? This is what made me mad for like the fourth time today. My Nana tries to, so, okay, look, 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 look. Let me just paint the picture for you guys. We're walking to the to the room that his body is in. They have a curtain. Like here's, like this is what I'm seeing. A curtain and I guess he was laying on the table and I seen, it, they had a sheet over him I'm guessing. I don't know, I didn't go in. And I'm seeing um, someone's foot but like the sheets over it. So I know that's him laying on the table. Um, my Nana tried to push me in the room, okay? I'm telling her, no, like I don't, I don't want to go in there, no, no, no. And she's like, just go, just go. And she's trying to push me in the room and I'm like literally freaking the freak out, okay? I'm like flipping out. I'm like, no, I do not, like I don't want to see him like that. Like that's honestly my biggest fear. I felt like, I'm not even gonna get into it. I was like, no, I don't want to see him like that. I, like no that's not my dad anymore that's just what he had on this earth that's pretty much what happened at the hospital I, I didn't see him because i wanted to remember him how i see him literally less than probably like 12 hours before this happened us talking that night saying i love you saying good night that's how i wanted to remember him and that's how i'm remembering him and i did not want to see him laying on that table i did not want to see him lifeless because like no that, that like i felt like that like he's my superhero and Heroes don't die. That's how I'm thinking, like heroes don't die. Like my dad cannot be dead. So that's why I didn't want to see him. And then after that, shit, this is like so hard. So that was pretty much everything that I went through from that morning to at the hospital. Then after that, um, it's kind of, it's like I said, I was blacking out for like two, three days after that. Like I kept going in and out and I didn't feel alive. Like, I don't know if I slept. I didn't eat. I, I don't know. Like I was, I can, I cannot tell you guys how I felt in that moment. That day I feel like is a day that a part of me died when he died because um, when you don't know how to cope with something, it's like the first thing you do is be defensive of everything. Um, I started to become very mean and rude to everyone because I honestly didn't want to live anymore because it's like I don't want to live without my best friend. The only person that I can talk to and shit. I just, did, I really just didn't want to be here anymore. I wanted to be with my dad. So that happened. Um, it took me a long time. Like my Nana had me in therapy and it took me a long time to even adjust to the fact literally about a couple months ago me and dj had a long talk to even acknowledge that he was really dead like honestly because i always thought like oh he's gonna call me um like it didn't happen maybe with someone else and i knew that it was anyone else because the day that it happened i wanted to know for myself it was real so i take my phone out and i look on google and I see the accident in the news on on the website and they don't list his name because it was like um, one dead. He was the only one that died in the accident and he was the only one on the motorcycle and I think it was like a three or four car collision um, in a tunnel and what happened was he was driving to work and it's dark 
and the what is it cph cps cph didn't put out the flare guns that they normally put out when it's an accident um so when he entered it was an accident in the tunnel and like halfway in the tunnel and outside of it so when he was going through i guess he didn't realize that the cars were stopped and it was kind of too late for him to stop so he full speed banged into cars um i'm not sure um, the cause of his death because i really don't want to know um my grandpa did tell me that when he seen him um there was nothing really like no scratches or cuts all over his body so i'm guessing that was like internal probably brain um that caused it i found out probably like a year later that he didn't die instantly which i thought he did um so hearing that made me like all over again i was like sobbing police officer that actually was there at the accident for the other ones um took off his helmet tried to give him cpr um tried to give him cpr all the way to the hospital and you know he just didn't make it and yeah so after that day like i was saying um my i became a different person literally i started being really 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 mean to my nana like really mean because i didn't know where to like put my anger I was like really mad and I didn't know who to be mad at. So I was just mad at the world, everyone. Like, oh my God, I didn't want to talk to anyone. And I felt like it was because I tried to be so strong about it, not let my Nana see me crying. Cause it's like, yeah, I lost a dad, but she lost a son. And having a son, it's like, if anything happens to Landon, oh my God, you guys, oh my God. I don't know, like she's strong as hell, honestly. And that was her only son. She's strong as hell. Um, and I didn't want people to see me cry. I didn't want people to see I'm hurt. And I held that all inside. And honestly, that's something that she should never do. Like she did put me in counseling and therapy, like I said, but I, the lady honestly was not helping me. She was not talking about the situation. She was talking about school. And I'm like, that's honestly like the least of my worries right now is freaking school. Only person that I really only open up to and let them know how I'm really feeling, what's really going through my mind is DJ. And it took years. It was like a month before Layla was born. We had a long talk and I really opened up and told him stuff that I haven't told him before. And it's, it was been four years later. So it's really hard to open up and tell people how you feel, but that's the easiest thing for you to do. Well, it's, it's gonna be the hardest thing to do, but that's the most helpful thing to do. It will help you in the long run. What you do? You good? Yes. You sure? Yeah, don't do that. You're gonna make me cry. Well, back to what I was saying, how that was one thing that got me mad when I was telling you guys the story of the day that it happened. I feel like I was really mean towards my Nana and um, how I just switched and became like really evil was because I was mad at the fact that they told me that we were gonna go to the hospital and see my dad. I mentally prepared myself to go to the hospital and see him like paralyzed, honestly. <laughs> like that was the that was the thing like, oh, like, oh my God, how is he gonna adjust to his life being paralyzed? Like how are we gonna have to adjust to helping him like live now, basically? That's why I was mad because you're literally telling me I'm gonna go to the hospital and see my dad. Me thinking that he was gonna be alive and talking to me looking at least looking at me you know that that kind of messed up my mind second thing that messed up my mind is her trying to push me in that room that really like it freaked me out like it scared me i feel like they tried to handle the situation with me the best that they could the best that they thought was okay but a lot of things that happened was not okay <laughs> i know this video is like all over the place oh my god but i'm just starting now to like really love life again after having laid in um i don't know it's a, it changed after having him it like filled like my heart was empty like i felt like i didn't have one i felt like nothing in the world mattered if i died today i would not care that's how i felt i didn't have emotions towards anything i felt like i just like a sw like i just clicked off with the world honestly like like inside i felt so empty and dark and 
I don't know. I just, I, I pretended, I woke up every day and pretended like I was happy. That's the best way I can explain my emotions. I woke up every day, told myself, you're okay, be strong, smile. As I went through my mind every day for three and a half years, I literally just faked it every day. After I had that talk with DJ, like it was just like a, like, like this is really happening, Deja. You cannot change life. It happened. It it's happened to more than just me. That's what I felt like. Like how can this happen to me and only me? And I didn't realize like kids younger than me have lost their parents and they have to deal with it. It was just too soon for me, honestly. I don't care what nobody say. My dad was only 36. Um and it, it was too soon for him. I know I touched a little on like how I felt um, that the death's not even half of it. This is going to be really hard because I really have not told anyone. People in my family watch my, my videos and no one knows this, but when my dad died, I wanted to die. Like I literally had suicidal thoughts every day. Sometimes um, when I will be driving, um, I will forget that I was driving and I'll start daydreaming oh this is hard to say oh shit but I would I would think of ways I tried to kill myself if I swerve and hit the middle divider like is it am I gonna die would I would I be able to make an accident to the point of death you know if that makes sense like I was just trying to think like literally every time I drive I, I thought about it like oh if I swerve in front of this car they're gonna hit me and cause me to die or if, if am I gonna hit the divider flip over like would that cause me to die I was just thinking of ways to do it basically um it's like really hard to say it's, it's really really sad that it was like came down to it um I think I was thinking about it a little too much and the reason why I didn't go through with it is because I didn't want my family to have to go through the pain of losing someone else. Because my dad dying was like, like the first person really in, in, in that side of the family. Like, you know, like our immediate family. That was like the first person to die. And I didn't want to have anyone go through that again. So that's honestly why I didn't do it. And I didn't like do anything to cause me to die, you know. Um, I didn't want my Nana going through pain more than what she already had. Because I look at my Nana like my second, my mom basically. Oh my god, I don't want to talk about it. It's really hard. I look at my Nana, which is his mom, as my mom. I didn't want her to have to go through losing another kid again. So that's why that didn't happen. That's why I'm here today. I feel like if you're in, if you're in my situation or if you're going through this my situation, um, and it just happened to you, talk to someone. Talk to me if you need someone to talk to. Um, just just don't hold your emotion inside because that's that's what's going to drive you crazy. You have to like I just look at it now that I have my own angel. Like getting your own angel is honestly a blessing. Um he's not suffering, he's in heaven. I believe he's watching over me, he's guiding me, he's leading me on the right path. And I feel like he's doing he's able to do more for me up there than he was down here. Meaning protecting me, guiding me. Um, so that's just how I look at it. After four years, I'm just starting to like, every day I try to tell myself like, be positive, be happy, like, stop being so mean, so rude, like, let, let that go. I just felt really, really dark inside after it happened. And I wouldn't even call it like being depressed, honestly. It was just like a, like, I don't care. Like, I did not care about anything. I didn't care about anyone's feelings. I didn't care. I just did not care. That was like my whole day. So like, I don't care. Like, whatever. Like, if it happens, if I die today, uh, okay. Like, I just, I didn't care. And I don't think that was healthy, honestly. Like, it wasn't healthy at all. Having Layden now, it's like, he, he filled something in my heart. 
that like I'm so blessed and grateful to have him and it's really weird because Layden was born August 25th 2018 and the last day I seen my dad was August 25th 2014 and Layden came after his due date God basically took my soul with my dad on August 25th and he gave me my soul back on August 25th so I think that's just it's just it's amazing. I wear this necklace all the time because it's my dad's ashes in here. We did get my dad cremated because he wanted to be cremated if he ever died. Um, we went to Hawaii and spread his ashes in the ocean, um, which I'm saying this now. So if my family, if I ever die, I don't want to be buried. No, that freaks me out. I want to be cremated and I want to be spread in the exact location that we spread my dad's ashes. Okay, come back to this video when that day comes, because that's what I want. Yeah, my dad's funeral, I honestly would not have went if he was not cremated. Um, I never wanted to see my dad laying on a table lifeless. I never wanted to see him laying in a casket lifeless. Um, so if we would have had a typical funeral, I wouldn't have went. Um, at his funeral, I do kind of regret not getting up and talking, but that moment of my life, I don't know what I would have said. I just want to tell you guys that if you're going through something that I went through, or if you went through something that I went through, it gets better. I know a lot of people say that, like um, a lot of people ask, like, are you okay? Like, how are you doing? And you kind of just lie and say like, yeah, I'm good. Um, we know you're not good talk to someone it does get better I know a lot of people say that but it does take time just remember that your loved one is in a very special place that's better than this place you want them to be there than here on this earth and I do believe that my dad is in heaven because since my dad died I've felt him um I guess I'll get into that I've seen him um and I just know that he's still around watching over me watching over Layden watching over the rest of my family. So let me get into experiencing what I experienced probably like probably like three or four nights after my dad died. Um, I was staying with my Nana and I was going to sleep. I, I got off the phone with DJ and I said, okay, like I'm gonna go to bed. And I was laying on my right side going to sleep i literally felt a hand go like this so it's like somebody was standing over me and they put their hand on my face like this like this is where the pinky was like this and it went like this instantly i knew that was my dad and i felt like that was his way of telling me i'm okay goodbye i love you like i was laying there and i felt it it was like i could feel it was like warm and i could feel someone's hand just like press against my face and then it just left like i got a feeling like i wasn't scared i wasn't like sad i don't i don't know i can't explain the feeling but i got this feeling and i immediately start crying and i called my grandpa which is his dad and i told him like my dad just touched me like literally he just put his hand on my face and we talked about it and i just knew that was him the reason that i knew it was my dad because like that night before i told you i was going to sleep and i went to sleep um while i was falling asleep i went into my nana's room when she has she has my dad's ashes that was before we took them to hawaii but she has my dad ashes sitting up on her dresser and i went in there and i talked to him and i said let me know if you're still around me. Just give me a sign that you, you're you here with me, you're watching over me, like I love you, I miss you. Like, just show me something. That night I asked him and he did it. That's how I know it was him. But the second time, um, I was driving with my Nana. I didn't tell her, she still doesn't know. I mean, she'll know now because I'm sure she's watching this. Hi Nana, I love you. Um. We were in the car, we were talking, and I was driving. And I look in my rear view mirror, you know, the mirror at the top. I look through there, you know, always checking my mirrors. I look through there and I see my dad sitting behind me. Literally 
whole face like just sitting behind me and I looked and he looked dead at me. I was kind of shooketh, honestly, but inside I, I knew like that was his way of letting me know that he's still around, he's still watching, like don't forget about him, which I never will, but that was his way of letting me know like, hey, like I'm here, like, hi, how are you? I really believe it's true that is if you lose a loved one and they come to you in your dreams, that's honestly them. I had this journal that um, I wrote down every time that I would get a dream about my dad and it was literally happening the same day every month for like four or five months in a row. Every day on the exact same day, I would get a dream about him and it was so weird because the dreams were like so vivid to the point that I knew it was him coming to me in my dream. I will have a dream, something happened, my dad will show up, and the first like, I think it happened like five or six times, but on the last time it happened was the first time he ever talked. Like in the other ones he didn't talk, but it's weird because I will be dreaming and it will be like, oh, I'm, I'm in a dream, and I will think that it's, you know when you dream you think it's like really happening? And the moment I would know that I'm dreaming was the fact that I hugged him. And in that moment, I was like, wow, like you have to go back to heaven. Like you're, you're not supposed to be here in my dream like you died. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what happened in my dreams. Like I would hug him and be like, well, like, oh damn, like I'm dreaming. Like you, you're, you died. And I would just hug him and he'll hug me and then he'll just like i'll wake up the last dream i've ever had um i haven't had any dreams since then um the last one i hugged him and i was like oh like damn this is the dream and i said i love you i said that in every dream but he never talked back to me but i said i love you and he said i love you and then he was gone and i woke up crying because like i was like oh my god like he actually talked back to me for once um and that was the last dream I had. It makes me sad that like he won't be there to walk me down the aisle. Um, he didn't see me graduate. He didn't see Layden be born. Um, you know, typical stuff a girl would think about if they lost their dad. Um, but I know that he's still around and he's still watching. And one time I showed Layden his picture and it's like Layden knew who he was. So I feel like he was with um, my dad in heaven before he got to me. His little soul was up there. Like he's met my dad already, I know that. Um, my dad watched over him. I will continue to tell Layden about him and that's what DJ tells me all the time. Like, you have to let Layden know who his grandpa was. Like, that's the video, I don't wanna talk much. I don't know if I left anything out. I know I'm like all over the place, I apologize. I just didn't really like have a breakdown, okay? On the camera, I, I wanna be strong and I, I don't really like showing my emotion and it's it's really hard for me it's really hard for me to even like film this and talk about it and release it like i don't want to edit it <laughs> honestly like i was saying before if if you guys are going through this or if you've been through this um you can come to me talk to me if you have any other questions that i didn't address um because i know my mind is i don't even remember what i was talking about five minutes ago like i kind of was my mind was just everywhere um comment down below i'll be more than happy to let you guys know or um if you just want to talk in the comments i'm there to talk to you that's the story of my father my mans <laughs> um i'll go through the video i love you guys bye